Hi, my name is Hazel May Gumapet, a Bachelor of Physical Education student. And for today's video, I am going to discuss about the K-12 curriculum and what is science. So let's have first an overview about what is K-12 curriculum. The K-12 program offers a decongested 12-year program for the students which aims to give them sufficient time to master skills and acquire basic competencies with the goal of being competitive on a global scale. Students of the new system will be equipped with the skills required to be ready for employment, entrepreneurship, middle-level skills development, and higher education even if they intend to do so after graduation. The K-12 program promotes global competency by accelerating mutual recognition of Filipino graduates and professionals in other countries. The new curriculum allows students to choose between three tracks which are the academic, technical vocational livelihood or the TVL, and the sports and arts strand. It will also give students opportunities to undergo immersions, have relevant exposure to a variety of industries, and to have experience in their chosen track. Whereas the old curriculum offers a broad and linear curriculum, it did not include enough practical applications like the K-12 does. As we can see today, learner-centered design also affects the K-12 curriculum, which puts the learner at the heart of the teaching and learning process. This is very useful because I think the teaching and learning approach is very successful if the learners can work on their own to explore and understand more and only if they are put on the stage. The advantage of this design is it gives the power to the learners which is they are identified as the experts in knowing what they need to know. It creates a direct link between in classwork and learners' need for literacy outside the classroom. Learner-centered design curriculum, I think, is being applied in senior high school, especially in gas trend which what I have taken during my senior high school days. The methods is just focusing on the activities from the teacher to the learners. And these methods include, first is the active learning, in which students solve problems, answer questions, formulate questions of their own, discuss, explain, debate, or brainstorm during the class. Secondly is the cooperative learning in which students work in teams on problems and projects under conditions that assure both positive interdependence and individual accountability, and lastly, the inductive teaching and learning, in which the students are first presented with challenges. Inductive methods include inquiry-based learning, case-based instruction, problem-based learning, project-based learning, discovery learning, and just-in-time teaching. In comparison to school policies or curriculum objects, for instance, this design focuses on planning, often starting with a student in mind. Well accomplished, several of the most intimidating elements of academia can be neutralized whilst at the same time that the distance between students and understanding. Put another way, teaching that is conscious of students and their needs above all else is learning-centered teaching. It places students at the forefront of the process of learning. Subject-centered curriculum design revolves around a particular subject matter or discipline, such as mathematics, literature, or biology. This type of curriculum design tends to focus on the subject rather than the student. It is the most common type of standardized curriculum that can be found in the K-12 public school. 